You can learn a lot about life by drawing birds. Alright dudes, this is me, Zach from G Trip. No geometry in this one because I've been drawing some birds. Why? Because I'm a bit rusty. It's been so long since I've drawn any birds that I need to practice them first. So I started off doing these simple straight to ink birds and they didn't look great. This one is okay, I guess, and I like this little guy. But like I say, it's been ages since I've drawn birds, so I was a bit rusty. And some of them turned out real bad. But they started to get a bit better. I messed around with some watercolour. Then I started sketching them out in pencil first before drawing them with ink. And they reached a level where I thought, okay, you know what, this is actually acceptable to share with the people of YouTube. These are all birds from my life list. My fascination with birds came about during the four month lockdown. I set up a bird bath. Even now, I spend an ungodly amount of time spying on them. I've actually learned a lot about life from watching them. So I'm gonna share with you 10 things that the birds have taught me about life. All right, I'm gonna start off by drawing a hepatic tanager. This guy came in my garden one time. I've only seen him once, but it was a beautiful bird, bright orange. And um, yeah, it was, it just came and went really quick. But we do have a couple of tanagers that come all the time. They're blue gray tanagers and they're funny dudes. They like to eat the aloe, the pollen from the aloe. And um, they're not massive fans of the bath, but they like to get under the hose if I'm watering the garden. And they just love it. They go, <laughs> they, they just love being under the hose. It's like Nirvana for them. So anyway, my first lesson that I've learned from the birds is that they express themselves fully, whether it's when they're flying, dancing, bathing, whatever they're doing, they've got personality and they've got style. And I don't think it's like, I don't think they're consciously doing it. It's not an egotistic thing or anything like that. It's just the way they are. What they're doing, they're creating from, from a place of expression, unconscious expression, and the ego is not involved that's how it looks to me anyway. The next bird I'm going to draw is a spotted sandpiper. I always see these at the beach. They're just on the floor running around, sticking their beak in the ground. I don't know what they're actually eating. I don't know what's under there. They've got freakishly big feet. Another thing I've noticed about birds is they're minimalists. They don't have any possessions. Obviously, not many animals do have possessions. Which makes me think, well, it's, it's really weird that we humans have so many possessions. Do we need them? A while ago now, I spent six months traveling around the world. I was hitchhiking from England to Hong Kong. I mean, we actually wanted to go to India, but just didn't, didn't make it. Me and my mate just wanted to see what it would be like to be homeless vagabonds. So we were hitchhiking and we were sleeping in the woods along the way. So obviously we had to travel light and... All I took with me was the essentials and a couple luxuries. So I just had like basic things for hygiene, just a towel and a toothbrush and everything. Just the clothes that I would need for like all weather, um, some cooking and camping things. And my luxury items were a sketchbook and some pens. I actually took a hacky sack and a slack line, like a mini slack line as well. Um, but I, I ended up ditching them because I just, they were too heavy. I wanted to get rid of as much weight as possible. And um, I was actually, I was cutting off straps from a bag just to get rid of things, just so it was lighter. My point is, I had nothing. I didn't want anything. I wanted, to, I wanted less things. And I was really happy at that time. Whether there's a link there or not, I don't know. But I just feel like the less things you have, the happier you are. Who was it that said, was it Bill Hicks that said, you don't own things, things own you. I guess birds do have nests, which is kind of like a possession, but not really. You know, it, they're not they're not attached to it. If it, it's just made of sticks and if it breaks or blows away or whatever, they just move on, build another one. They don't care. Next bird I'm gonna draw is an ornero. These guys are loud, super loud. They're always screaming their heads off. They mostly hang out on the ground. They walk around like a chicken. Bob in the head, really beautiful bird, orange and white. Another thing I've noticed about birds is they have their tight little family 
you know, they're like their own species that they're always hanging out with. But they also interact with all the other birds. Not exactly sure what's going on, but there's definitely some kind of community of birds. And they all, they will either team up together when they have to, or, you know, they're always, they're always like bickering over the bath and everything. And there's just, there's definitely a community vibe going on there. And I think that's really beneficial for people as well. You know, it's just, it's good to be around interesting people and yeah, just to have daily interactions, you know, it's much better than isolating yourself. I think as an artist, you spend a lot of time isolating yourself because that's where the best work comes from. But, but you can't do that all the time. This dude's called a collared anti-shrike, but we call him Mohawk boy around here. He's not always around. He's, it comes and he goes seasonal, which is pretty common with a lot of the birds around here. They, you know, they'll go and we won't see them for like a year, but it's always nice when they come back. Here's what I've noticed that birds live in harmony with nature. They're always listening to what the weather is doing and they're always alert to their surroundings, but they also build eco-friendly houses just out of sticks. Yeah, it's crude, but <laughs> but it's cool, isn't it? You know, like they, they leave no trace of destruction. They only eat what they need. They don't stockpile anything. And then they don't leave any waste behind besides a bit of poop. And then you look at the way humans behave and there's just you know everything especially here where i live in peru every building site leaves just a trail of destruction behind it you know because they just they just there's no there's no rules on tipping so all of the waste products from building just go usually they go into the nearest water supply so they, they just end up in a stream or a river it's shocking really like i remember when i was in when i was living in the sacred valley they were building this luxury hotel right on the side of the river and you know like it looks it looks absolutely amazing and i think like all the people that would go there would think it's such a beautiful and scenic location but i watched them build it for like two years and then um, they were just dumping all of their bags of cement like used bags of cement and everything into the, into the river right next to it and just there was just like rusty nails everywhere on the ground and everything it's like you're in this incredible location but you're not respecting it if that was a bird building a nest there would be no destruction this little guy is a house wren they're just tiny little balls but mega cute and um i'm not sure why they're called a house wren but i'm guessing it's because they're always hanging out around the house i always see these guys just hanging out in just like any crevice they can find on the house because our, our roof is made from bamboo so they go inside the bamboo i don't know what they're doing in there but they're always inside just hanging out pretty cool little bird and here's here's my fifth lesson that i've learned from the birds is um they're always living in the present moment they're never stressing about the future i don't think they're you know but birds aren't worrying about things that may or may not happen in the future they just they don't care they're just totally focused on what they've got to do they're always alert they're always looking out what's around them you know they're totally focused locked in and i think that that is our true nature that's that's how we're supposed to be and that's when we're the happiest so like for me i'm happiest when i'm on a trail you know i'm hiking on a trail because everything is new there's nature everywhere there's just so many sights and sounds to take in and everything and it just because you're living in the present moment that brings a state of happiness and just being content with everything the way it is this guy's a saffron finch all of these drawings are black and white obviously but these these guys are bright yellow and they're beautiful and they're just really cool they're really nice birds. They're really comfortable around people. They follow me around all the time. You know, when I'm out for a walk, they'll come with me. They don't get super close. You know, they're always just like in, in the trees, but they're just, they're really happy to just follow you around and see what you're up to. I think it's because I'm always feeding them. I'm always giving them seeds and giving them water. They love to take a bath. 
they're just they're really cool birds and um they're easy going which is something i've learned from the birds is just not to let anything bother you you know there's a saying isn't there if you've got a problem in your life and you whether you can or you can't do something about it don't worry because worrying is not going to get you anywhere if you can do something about it cool don't worry if you can't do something about it well there's no point in worrying and that's that's how the birds are nothing bothers them you know if they come and the bath is empty they'll either wait or they'll just go they're not bothered if there is water they'll take a bath you know if they see a bug they'll eat it they're just going with the flow this dude is a superciliated wren which is a cool name similar to a house wren but much more noisy so here's another thing that i've learned is that birds are loyal to the ones that they love so i always see birds with either their partner or their kids you know there's a lot of solitary birds as well but i'm sure they go home to their to their partners or their kids but yeah they always they're always sticking together which is cool next up we got a seed eater these dudes are savages i love these guys they come in a huge flock there's probably like a hundred of them and they'll just devour absolutely everything that you you've got on offer the bath's full they drain it not because they're greedy or anything it's just because there's so many of them so here's another life lesson from the birds they're always on guard. They are always alert to what's going on around them. They're always on the lookout. And they can be pretty feisty with birds that they don't like. Like we got birds of prey around here. So we got hawks and falcons. And when they come into their territory, like if they come into the mockingbirds territory, the mockingbirds hang out in pretty big groups. But they're not always together. They're, they're, they're scattered around. They're like the security of the area. And if hawks... If any bird of prey comes in or if, if a squirrel comes in, they just go mad. They freak out and they just gang up on them. They start pecking at them like crazy. And it's weird, nothing nothing ever attacks them. You know, they'll be attacking like a huge, like the caracara is, it's like a small eagle. And if it lands in a tree in the mockingbird's territory, they just gang up on it and start pecking at it. And it doesn't do anything. It never fights back. It just, it respects the, the mockingbirds, I think. I don't know what's going on there. Next up is a scarlet-backed woodpecker. This is this is a stunning bird. Like, the colours on it, so beautiful. This one also has huge feet, like the sandpiper. And, um, yeah, everybody knows what, what woodpeckers are like. They're always just around pecking wood. So, here's another thing that I've learnt about life from the birds. Is that their relationships are ephemeral. Not all birds pair up for life. You see a pair of lovebirds and it's actually, they just pair up for the season. And then the next season they'll find another partner. And their kids, their kids leave the nest after like a year. And then apparently they don't even recognize their parents after that time. As soon as they've left, they don't recognize them anymore. As a traveling man, I've got experience with this. You know, when you're on the road, you form these incredible bonds with people. But then inevitably... You have to go your separate ways and that's always really sad, you know, because you make just incredible friends. But you'll always have the memories, you know, and it's just, it's a part of life. And the last bird I'm going to draw is a necklace, spine tail. These guys are always lurking in the bushes. I don't actually see them that often, but they're always around. They're pretty cool. And yeah, here's my last lesson about life is um, you got to have confidence. Because at some point, every bird has to take that leap of faith and learn to fly on its own. It just, its instinct takes over and it's got to learn to fly, leave the nest. And they don't fight it because I think they know that it's it's going to be worth the struggle. You know, it's going to be scary at first. They've got to literally jump out of a tree. They're basically a baby. They are a baby, aren't they? When they do it. They gotta jump out of a tree and it's either gonna go well or it's gonna go horribly wrong. But they just gotta have that confidence that everything will work out and it's gonna be worth taking the leap.